Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Proctor's Historical Committee show, uh, and today we're going to be interviewing Jamie Lahat, the executive director of Metroplex. So we're very proud to have Jamie here today. It's May 10th, 2018. Good morning, Jamie. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. <clears throat> so I know you started in uh, 1999 when you left as a assistant commissioner of the New York State Division of Housing and Community Renewal. So what did the 400 block look like when you stepped into town? Uh, Schenect downtown Schenectady was pretty abandoned at that point. Mm. Uh, I think the vacancy rate was about 80%. Uh, before I took the job at Metroplex, I was being interviewed, drove around the city. I had attended Union College, graduated right. in 1983, right. remember the Canal Square project, mm -hmm. uh, thought downtown Schenectady, you know, had a lot going for it. Uh, right. I think Schenectady's always had sort of a, uh, a wealth base there that other communities in the Capital District mm -hmm. didn't have. Um, come back 15 years later and it looked like it just sort of fell off the cliff. Right. And uh, so there a lot of abandoned stores, not a lot of activity, uh, clearly needed help of some sort and that's what the Metroplex Authority was set up to do. So why don't you give us a little lens into that? Because were you the, um, was there an authority before you or was it, did it kind of come together? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a, a, a community effort taken up, uh, started with Schenectady 2000, Neil okay. Gola, Roger Hull, uh, Wally Graham, series of other business leaders, uh, formed Schenectady 2000, came up with the idea of the Metroplex Authority, a, a state public authority that would help revitalize Schenectady. I remember reading about it in the newspapers. It was very controversial, uh, didn't gain widespread support, mostly because the, the Metroplex is a one-of-a-kind economic development authority, public authority in the state. It's one-of-a-kind because, number one, it has a dedicated stream of revenue. A portion of the county sales tax goes to the Metroplex authority, four checks a year, spend it or not, the money just keeps coming in. And I think raising the tax, the sales tax, obviously created some controversy in the sure. in the 90s. Metroplex has the power of eminent domain, has bonding authority at that time of $50 million. Now it's $100 million. Uh, we have the power to override local planning and zoning ordinances. Mm. There's a lot of tools in the box that can be right. used. And I think people were very afraid of establishing that type of mechanism. Uh, it required a home rule message from the Schenectady County Legislature to the New York State Legislature. They put it into a bill. It got passed on the last day of business in August 1998, uh, and, um, uh, and Governor Pataki signed it shortly thereafter. So the board was seated then in January of 1999. Certainly, I arrived on the scene in 2006, and there were still naysayers, downtown naysayers, and I, I don't hear them anymore. <laughs> uh, but, yep. but I remember yep. their voices very clear. Right. This may not be up to date. I'm going to have to read, read this. $175 million in financial assistance for capital projects, 1,500,000 square feet of new and renovated space, 5,000 jobs. It's crazy, right? In choosing to become executive director, how important was it that you knew you'd be making a difference? Uh, I was or hoping. Yeah, uh, uh, certainly as as a one of a kind. I'd worked in both uh, economic development and community development, both at the local level in Rensselaer and Columbia counties, and also at the state level with state economic development, what's now Empire State Development and oh, the right. Division of Housing. So I thought I had the right experience to come into the into the job. Um, it was very contentious in Schenectady. Mm. There was a lot of bickering going on. And that's what happens in communities where there's a lack of resources or you're fighting over resources. Sure. So that was one of the one of the big issues. My view is that communities uh, have to work together to be successful. It's great having money. But money isn't the driver. It's really getting everyone on mm -hmm. the same page. And I guess the history of Metroplex is that took a while to happen. The fir first few years were certainly very uh, bumpy. Uh, there wasn't a lot of agreement on what the authority should be doing, what mm -hmm. its project should be. Um, uh, but we kind of sorted through all of that. It was, it, it, as you mentioned, early on, we had lots of people coming to our board meetings, committee meetings, sure. public hearings. We had one public hearing with 150 people. Mm -hmm. We had board meetings where 40 people would attend, you had a lot of media scrutiny. Uh, it settles down. It settled down, mm -hmm. and uh, in part because you've kind of gone through the quick list of achievements and successes. $175 million, that's just from Metroplex alone. Uh, that, that's leveraged another $900 million in, in private sector investment. Huge amount of investment in Schenectady. 
you kind of sit and look at it sometimes and say, geez, I guess a billion dollars just doesn't go as far as it used to. <laughs> uh, you know, because it really is just sure. constantly being there that trying to get the investment. And I can tell you in the early days, just trying to get private developers to come to Schenectady mm. was very, very difficult. I met with all of them. And it was really right. difficult because they didn't like the politics. They didn't like uh, the difficulty of, of getting approvals. Um, Metroplex was an unknown. We had money, but it was a bit of an unknown. Mm. And the board was very divided about, uh, about things. We had a lots of six, five votes, that kind of thing. That doesn't exactly build confidence in the, with private developers investing in your community. Right, well that's challenging for sure. Um, a great deal of the funds that have been allocated have gone into this dream that is Proctor's. Um, how essential was it? How essential was the success of Proctor's, do you think, to Metroplex and to Metroplex's mission? Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, I would say that coming into Schenectady, uh, if you look at the literature and economic development, uh, arts, entertainment, culture mm. is, is, is what has revitalized many communities, certainly in east of the Mississippi. That is kind of the recipe. Right. Not that there really is a recipe, but that's one <laughs> sure. of the real foundations of it. So coming in, uh, Proctor's revitalization was clearly uh, uh, looked at as an anchor for downtown Schenectady. Something more needed to be done. Mm -hmm. It took visionaries like Harry Epkarian, Karen Johnson, Philip Morris coming in to kind of make that happen. And there's a bit of a process that we can sort of talk about. Um, but uh, I would say that certainly in my tenure, you know, Metroplex and uh, Proctor's are like this. I mean, they've yeah. just been together every step of the way. Uh, it's an important relationship. Uh, it's, there's never been a problem with the relationship, and certainly it has strengthened over time. Not only in our, you know, investment in Proctor's uh, again, which has been leveraged many times over with all the work that's been done with lenders and contributors and uh, so many members of the community that support. Uh, proctors, uh, but just being able to uh, bolster and support the other things going on in Schenectady. Proctor's success le leads to having five hotels. There was one when we came in, uh, one that maybe was viable. Uh, there are five <laughs> hotels now, uh, and expanding the office environment, having something going on you know, every day, virtually of the year, uh, here and now elsewhere in downtown. Yeah, there is that Newtonian, you know, an object in motion stays in motion concept, because when I'll see the Melosi's outside, they'll talk, about it, and, J and Johnny's is open on a night when there's no show, and they're packed. And that's a kind of miraculous, right. is it not? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, it, in referring to that, then, does Proctor's continue to be as important as it once was to the plan, or is it now, or is there some other star that's going to show up on the horizon? What, what, what is the future of that as, a, as Proctor's as the driver? Well, as, a, as an anchor, as a mainstay yeah. of the downtown, I think you, you certainly want it to, right. to, to grow and, and prosper. Uh, and, but you've seen the, you know, geographically, the downtown is kind of spread out. The core of the downtown mm -hmm. is kind of larger than what it was. You know, right. when we came here, it seemed like it was just State Street and mm -hmm. then kind of moved over to Franklin and Liberty. And clearly now it's over to Union Street. And now you have the connection with Mohawk Harbor. That is the test, isn't it? Yeah. Right? Because when I arrived here, one of the interesting conversations that I have with people from Manhattan, other people that I knew, they said, well, that's great. So you have this one block where these cool things are happening. But what about the next block? But right. it is happening. Right. Right. Right, and you know we and we have conversations. We're not really planners at Metroplex, but we talk to planners, and you look mm -hmm. at looking ahead, what else needs to be done, and so you're looking at traffic patterns, how that might change. Right. I mean, certainly we've done our fair share working with the city of Schenectady of infrastructure. I think it's one of the you know sort of best kept secrets about the Metroplex Authority working with the city in particular and just uh, uh, investing in substantial infrastructure mm -hmm. in downtown Schenectady. I would say our participation is probably 40 or 50 million dollars. To take a city more than 100 year old, you need to replace that infrastructure. Mm. You read about it in the paper, the problems in city of Albany, city of Troy, almost any of the older communities, huge pipe breaks, you know, devastates right. an area for weeks, sometimes months right. at a time. In, in the core downtown, commercial district here, much of it has been replaced, just been changed over, freshened up, 
good for another 100 years. Like the Erie Boulevard project? Right, that's yeah. right. And uh, right on State Street was, was fully reconstructed. Yeah. And there was a lot of debate at the time. Do you do this now or do you wait till you have, you know, all these buildings are right. filled and there's more things going on, the chicken and egg kind of thing. Sure. And um, I felt strongly that you really need to set the table. You know, mm -hmm. what, uh, I mean, what worse could happen? You come in, you set up your business in Schenectady, and now the street just got ripped up. Uh, right, so right. we kind of did it the other way around. It wasn't, uh, there wasn't a huge amount of support, I think, to do it. Um, but it, I think it was the right thing to do, certainly in, in hindsight. Cleaned everything up, ready to go, and then Proctor's being, again, one of the, one of the anchors, because that took place after the streetscape project took place. Right. Um, and then sort of set the table for their expansion, MVP up the hill, uh, the, the expansion of the Broadway garage, which were all predicated on having more things happening at Proctor's. I remember shortly after my arrival here, the street was being torn up and the conversation was, well, if you're gonna run a pipe to send heat across the street, now's the time to do right, it. Right, that's right. And can we do it? Yeah. And I remember Neil and other people stepping up and saying, yes, this yeah. is the time. Yeah, and it was, it was a tough time because that project was not particularly well run by the city. It was a bit of a disaster, honestly. Okay. Um, and, um, and it, you know, to some degree created a delay, but it was, mm. you know, we just need to get this done. So how fast can you run these pipes under State Street, which is full of infrastructure, on right. subsurface infrastructure, but it all, but it all got done. And, a and couple it, hundred years of infrastructure, right, probably. Right. Yeah. So let's see. Um, yeah. So entertainment, food, lodging. What's next for the 400 block in the surrounding area? What do you, what do you think we need? What's your focus? What do you want to support? Because we certainly have probably as many restaurants as we can possibly take right now. Oh, there's always room what, for more. <laughs> what do you think is next? Well, we're stretching it. So we're kind of working our way up State Street okay. uh, towards uh, Not Terrace, as well as down straight State Street below Erie Boulevard. So there's a tremendous amount of activity below Erie Boulevard. Right. A lot of new housing. Mm -hmm. ton, tons of uh, rental housing. Uh, a lot of people kind of wonder whether the we can support all that housing. Who's the... Um Who's your demographic? Who do you think is going to move? Who do you plan you know, on moving into that? Uh, it's a lot of millennials. That's yeah. really what uh, what the market studies show. Right. Uh, Schenectady was always um, you go back ten years. Um, downtown had very little first rate rental housing mm -hmm. available. Kind of a big problem uh, yeah, right. because there was sort of a uh, you sort of had this uh, indigenous population of relatively low income people. Mm -hmm. You want people with money on the streets and shopping here and going to the restaurants, supporting the the businesses. Uh, and it started with um, you know six apartments here, eight apartments there. Then it was nineteen apartments there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of slowly built up. I have my I have this hypothesis mm -hmm. that Albany and uh, Troy have always had artificially high uh, market rates for, for mm. rental housing because of student populations. They oh, have right. A lot of colleges, a lot of students. And I think that really pushes up the market. Mm. Schenectady hasn't had that. You have Union College where virtually all the students live on campus. Right. SCC is largely a commuter school, although there is now housing right. close by. But I think that's always sort of put a lot of downward pressure. Mm. Well, we've, we're, we've seen that really change. It's changed significantly so that rents have been rising. That's good for development and, and developers mm -hmm. coming in. Um, maybe you don't like the rent you're paying, but the, the product that's come on the market is fantastic. Uh, uh, certainly a Mohawk Harbor with 206 right. units. Uh, we've got another 200 units going on below uh, Erie Boulevard. Uh, but we just had a meeting today about uh, uh, going up towards the old Foster Complex. We have mm. Slide and Dirty there, uh, yeah. other businesses. But trying to create more of a festive uh, atmosphere outside. Um, yeah. You know, when the street was designed in 2001, it looked nice, there's a lot of great plantings, but it, it kind of hides the buildings. It kind of hides people walking mm. around. And so we're pushing 20 years later. So how can we change it so it's a little bit more festive? People love to eat outside. People word. love to people it's watch. A there's word. a lot of people to watch yeah. in Schenectady. Yeah. And so we're talking about how can we do that? Can we put together a quick project, put that together so that you sort of change the atmosphere, get people going up the hill yeah. um, and, and down the hill to come and, see and, that Proctor show. very beautiful this way. I'm sorry. It's very beautiful up there. <laughs> yeah, right. You brought some plans with you. Uh, what, what did you bring us? Well, I had wanted to mention that yeah. uh, uh, because uh, the strong partnership with Proctors, you know, when I started, uh, Harry Upcarian was the vice chairman of the mm -hmm. Metroplex board. Obviously, 
you know, lifelong advocate yeah. and supporter of, uh, of Proctors. And when I came through, there was basically a plan on the table for Proctors to control the entire 400 block. Mm. Uh, they had plans for just about everything that they kind of put, said, here's what we'd like to do. Well, Proctors didn't have didn't control every building on the block, so right. that was one issue. Uh, Metroplex went ahead and, and picked up 10 buildings right off the rip, and then we picked up another four buildings. Uh, so suddenly we had control of uh, virtually the entire block. So we went ahead with a planning process and uh, to, to try to build support for what we were doing. In some respects, it was kind of um, uh, counter to the way economic development had been done in Schenectady in the 80s and 90s, which tended to be very secretive and um, didn't really know who was all getting the benefits. This was a very public process, public charrettes, three uh, public forums, hundreds of people showing up. Uh, and of course, in the plan that was ultimately put together, uh, Proctor's was the cornerstone of the redevelopment sure. plan. But it also called for new office buildings, uh, downtown cinema, hotels, uh, a whole variety of things, most of which have happened. Yeah. Uh, I think you sort of have to have a plan. And I, I had just picked out kind of one one page here that, 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 that kind of shows a little bit of the vision of, of what would be done. Mm -hmm. um, and Proctor's is in here, and there was this whole piece in the plan about animating the downtown. Right. Uh, it had some very funny visuals of giant billboards atop Proctor's, you know, <laughs> announcing the next show. You know, it's a concept, and, sure, and that's sure. what it was intended to be, but now you've seen the emergence of the, the blade signs, and which people comment right. all the time, and that animates the, the downtown. It started with State Street, now it's mm -hmm. rolling down Broadway. Union Street has so, some of the same components of it, which is appropriate for Schenectady as the, you know, where the light bulb was invented. So. Well, you know, you, you, you brought the movie theater and you have SCCC in the, uh, the school, the beauty school, and you have the uh, AAA and the Y. You've gotten some pretty great gets. Are there any big fish that got away or that you wish you could get or you hope to attract in the future? Um, th we've had remarkably few uh, projects that have sort of tanked before mm -hmm. we got too far okay. far into them. There have uh -huh. been, th been a couple small ones, but we've kind of uh, rebounded on them. Uh, the one that really comes to mind is uh, where Bombers is located on oh, State Street. And that was always an interesting project. Our original developer, not a lot of experience in, in mm -hmm. real estate, I think bit off more than he could chew. We had a provision that we could take the building back, which mm -hmm. we did, and then we worked with the folks from from uh, from Bombers uh, and uh, and worked on their project. The, the issue with the is, yeah. it, it's been a great success, terrific business. But what was uh, interesting from our perspective was, you know, the exterior of the building, another hundred year old building, right. but it was cockeyed. You know, you look at it across the street and it was kind of <laughs> shifted in a weird sort uh -huh. of way. And um, so it was a lively debate um, mm. that we need to straighten it out. You know, again, my view is you get to do this once. You don't really right. get too many kicks at the can on, on right. helping, you know, one property after another. So Metroplex spent $250,000 to straighten it out, take off the entire masonry mm. uh, front of the building and then put it back up again. And uh, so maybe, you know, you could argue, oh, geez, it's bombers. Um, but on the other hand, it, it's a terrific looking building. Yes, it is. And it'll yeah. stay that way for, for a real, real long time. Uh, let's see. Um... Okay, in a, this is interesting to me. In a previous print interview, you referred to Schenectady as a national city. Can you tell us what you mean by that? Well, I think it's emerged as a, as a, as a national city in, in the sense that with Metroplex as a, as a one-of-a-kind economic uh, development agency, the revitalization process that's really not limited to the city, but certainly in the surrounding areas. We have invested in the, in the towns and the corridors practice a lot of smart growth principles um, mm. so that uh, in the, we've established, there were already established industrial parks, we've created more industrial parks. You could look at the GE campus as an industrial right. park. So what it does is you really differentiate where you have these core business sectors, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs, and then you have your more vibrant office environment and, and, and retail and dining and that sort of thing. And so I think a lot of those principles have really served Schenectady well. You know, you, you, you hate to sort of say they, you know, they kind of went, hit rock bottom, but, right. and, it, and it did. When I started here, the one restaurant, Petrocola's that was yeah. open, closed. It's like, well, I guess it can't get any worse <laughs> around here. So the only way is up. And what that has done is not only have we improved the city and really cleaned up the city and revitalized it, but also 
do it in a way that's very modern and contemporary. You know, and I, I don't think most communities get a chance to do that. Sure. If you're in the city of Troy, where I grew up, beautiful old buildings, but old buildings have their own issues. They're sure. small. Trying to preserve them is difficult. It's expensive. How do you make them you know, business friendly for the right. 21st century? There's a lot of issues there. It's very costly. Schenectady was never quite that historic. It was a fast growth community mm -hmm. in the early 20th century. And you know, we've probably demolished more buildings than I'd care to admit. Um, but as a result, you've got a lot of new, modern buildings that's great for business, whether you're you know, a retailer or a restaurant or an office. It still gives a sense, though, that the city's been here for a while. Yeah, for sure. It's not completely restripped, yeah. is it? Yeah, that's I know, right. I know when uh, we were involved in the first renovation here at Proctor's, or the big one, uh, after 2006, I would have people come to me and say, why isn't the arcade just like when I, you know, well, I remember it? It's so because that was when you remember it. The arcade's never been the same from the very first moment. I don't think there's a complete map of all the stores that have been here. I met a woman who had a shop in the arcade where she sold hats around World War II. And she said her, her store was so skinny that if you picked the hat out, she had to turn it sideways <laughs> to get it out. <laughs> and you tried the hat on in the arcade. And her husband owned the jewelry store where the um, uh, Pizza King is now, evidently. And she was still with us at that time. Well, we're getting towards the end here. What is your most unabashed dream for what Schenectady might become in 10 or 20 years from now? Just like completely fly loose. You know, what, where, I, where I, I would like to see Metroplex go and, 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 and city officials and community leaders is really expanding the revitalization effort into the neighborhoods. Right. And clearly there are issues with some of the neighborhoods. You still have the stockade district, which remains strong by all right. the data we take a look at uh, along Union Street, Upper Union Street, mm -hmm. towards the Niskayuna border. Uh, Hamilton Hill is kind of stabilized to some degree, uh, but we've seen a lot of deterioration in, mm -hmm. in Mount Pleasant and to some degree in, in Bellevue. And, and Metroplex has a lot of restrictions on what it can do in neighborhoods. And if we could sort of you know, take off those handcuffs and be able to do more, I right. think you could really take a look at a, a more comprehensive effort of really trying to, to bolster those neighborhoods. I think the casino has just kind of found money for all the cr critics that are out there about the casino. Right. You don't find businesses that bring in a thousand jobs overnight, which they right. have done. Right. Uh, really stabilize the tax base, reducing taxes. So I think the, the environment is right to really mm -hmm. try to get those neighborhoods a bit more revitalized, get more people investing in buying in Schenectady. Mm -hmm. That's what I really would like to see happen. Metroplex has a statutory sunset of 2038. It's been extended oh, twice. So so we have, we're 20 years in and we got 20 more years wow. to go. Right so middle. so yeah, so I think you really do need to take a look at yeah. what, what what could we do in the next 10 years or so? Um, keeping, you know, Proctors as an anchor. GE is an anchor. And mm -hmm. GE's going through some tough times right now. We keep our fingers crossed, hope for the best, but they're yes. a solid corporate citizen sure. and certainly a, a well-paying uh, uh, business in, in the community and just rock solid for 100 years here. Uh, the casino, Mohawk Harbor, Access to the River, mm -hmm. those are things that you know we only sort of just talked about you know 20 years ago, and now they've become, they've become a reality. Mm -hmm. And we've seen our investment you know, in Proctors, which started in 2004. It's, we continued it to 2017, seven different times we've supported Proctors mm. financially, almost $11 million in Metroplex grants. Yeah, I have a list of all that. It's kind of remarkable. Let's, let's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, 11 million bucks just about. So 2004, over $9 million in stage expansion, very important in addressing modern touring Broadway, right? Uh, 150,000 for district heat plant in 2005, 2007 600,000 dollar bridge loan, 2007 73 grand for the facade, uh, and it goes on and on. So yeah. really, you've been there every time. Well, you know, uh, we had our plan, downtown yeah. plan, which I said Proctor's is a key part of it. Philip Morris comes to town. We're trying to really focus on the project. The first investment, nine and a half million dollars. Uh, Philip and I sat down at Ambition Cafe, have a cup of coffee. We'd already been talking about what's needed. The cost of the project was $25 right. million dollars plus all day long. Um, our conversation lasted about 20 minutes, however long it takes to drink a cup of coffee. 
you know, we were really willing to do, we were talking about seven and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. Philip was asking for 12 or 13 million dollars. Sure. After 20 minutes, we settled on nine and a half million dollars. Mm -hmm. But it was a real challenge because Proctors was making a commitment not only for the stage expansion and all the other good things right. that have happened, but they were making a commitment to raise $7 million on their own yeah. uh, because they couldn't support it all with debt. And there, there's not an arts organization in the capital district that had ever raised that kind of money. There, you know, hospitals raise that kind of money. <laughs> so you don't true. you don't get that from the from the right. arts community. And the capital district has a strong arts community. Always has. Uh, it's, yeah. it's vibrant, among the best in the entire nation. And that was one of the stalling points. Was really can you do it? You know, Philip. Philip said, sure, we can do it. Yeah. Um, and they did do it. Um, but it was a real concern. One of the big risks of the project is can you go out and get this community to support Proctors with that kind of money? Uh, and with the help of the, the county provided some assistance, mm -hmm. uh, and the, Proctors obviously went out, raised a lot of money, and they were able to pull it together. So those risk factors kind of went away. Everybody did what they had to do, and we've come up with the, the, the gem and anchor of downtown. It's a miracle. Um, last question. Uh, you, had, you went to university here at Union, if you could go back and speak to that student, what might you say to him and what might he say to you knowing what you've achieved here? You know, I've been to Union several times to, uh, to talk to classes yeah. uh, about uh, Metroplex and the revitalization of mm -hmm. Schenectady. And the biggest change has simply been students coming back to downtown. Now, uh -huh. I was an unusual student right. at Union in that I was a transfer, number one. They don't mm -hmm. take too many of those. And I lived uh, right on J Street across from City Hall. So I didn't live on campus. Oh, okay. And that it was very true. unusual yeah. in the early 80s for that to mm -hmm. happen. But I still remember all the stores, the record store, mm -hmm. uh, three different head shops, <laughs> uh, you know, some cool restaurants and stuff. J Street, pedestrian J Street was right. open to driving. You just pull up on the sidewalk and hop oh, in. Man. It was pretty amazing. Uh, um, and but it, it shut kind of shut down as, as the deterioration mm. continued. The students just stayed on campus, and uh, one of the real signals of the revitalization: the movie theater, Proctor's, more places to eat and drink and do stuff, uh, has been getting the students uh, off, off campus and and part of the community. And it's a that's a two way street. You know, the union's not going anywhere. They can't move right. to another place right. as much as sometimes they would say they don't really didn't like Schenectady, um, hmm. but I think it's really changed to the point that, you know, the students like coming to downtown. I think it's part and parcel of how they sell Union College. Um, and it's more the Union that I remember now gotcha. as compared to then. You know, I, right. I wasn't around for that whole part where there really wasn't anything when the you walls, know, going when on. the walls went up. Right, right? that's yeah. right, that's right. I know with Raw happening here on Jay, I see more young people than, first it was the first, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the first infusion was bombers. Yeah. And now with it's just all over the place yeah. and it's, it's just marvelous. Yeah. Well, you've been an amazing guest and we've learned a lot about uh, Metroplex and downtown Schenectady. So it's a, it's a keeper. Thanks. My pleasure. Thanks.